welcome to the class 8 and in the last class we were formulating the problem of uh, coordinating an upstream and a downstream circuit breaker. So, we will continue with that particular uh, problem. Okay. So, we had circuit breaker uh, 1 and 2 and uh, the question was how what do you mean by coordinating these two breakers. So, we discussed what should be the requirement and the points that are were discussed was referring to the requirements of the individual breakers. Then the next thing that you need for doing the coordination is to actually do you need to perform a fault analysis uh, at the different uh, uh, zones in the bus and identify what is the range of fault currents that you could expect through the protective device and what is the nominal current and uh, then you will decide on what would be the parameters that you would uh, uh, employ for your breaker uh, to, to uh, uh, enable the appropriate coordination. Okay. So, we started with the data regarding the circuit breakers. So, if you look at the circuit breakers, uh, uh, we had mentioned that the circuit breakers definite time delay of uh, 40 milliseconds or 2 cycles, uh, it has extremely inverse characteristic. and research time of 30 seconds and we uh, mentioned that the I square T uh, for conductor in zone 1 is uh, 2 in the 10 to the power of 6 ampere square second and for, for conductors in zone 2, it is 1 into 10 to the power of 6 ampere square second and then you could calculate what is the A of requirement of C B 1 and uh, based on our previous discussion, you can relate that to the I square T divided by I pick up square in this case you needed an A less than 39.5 seconds for C B 1 and A for C B 2 uh, we identified it should be less than 44.4 seconds and then we decide to actually have breakers C B 1 and C B 2. So, it has P equal to 2, B equal to point 0 0.04 seconds and A is 30 seconds for C B 1 which is less than 39.5. For C B 2 your P and B is the same your A you could select it to be say 35 seconds and 35 is less than 44. Okay. So, next we will have to look at what are the fault conditions. Uh, so, if you have a fault in zone 1, your circuit breaker 1 has to operate. So, so for circuit breaker 1, your trip time at I f max in zone 1 is now 30 divided by 1400 divided by 225 which is the pickup current for that particular breaker minus 1 plus 0 0.04. So, this is uh, 0 0.84 seconds. If you look at, at uh, the trip time at your I f min, 
you can do the calculations uh, it will be uh, 1.64 seconds. The current level is 1000 amps in this case. So, it is 30 divided by 1000. So, if there is a fault in zone 1, CB1 has to operate for fault in zone 2. Uh, essentially circuit breaker 2 has to operate so for circuit breaker 2 your a is 35 divided by 1000 the pickup current for circuit breaker 2 is 150 amps And if you look at your trip time at I f min, the I f min is 600 amps, pickup current of 150 amps. So, at 1000 amps, uh, the circuit breaker 2 trips in. Uh, 85 milliseconds in at 600 amps it trips in 2.4 seconds ok. So, the, the next question is if uh, for some reason circuit breaker uh, 2 does not operate and circuit breaker 1 backs up uh, circuit breaker 2 then you can ask what is uh, the required trip duration for circuit breaker 1 during the fault range in zone 2. So, C B 1 in zone 2 is now 30. If you look at now at the minimum current level, So, if you look at now at the two current levels at 1000 amps, at 1000 amps C B 2 trips in in 0 0.85 seconds and C B 1 trips in 1.64 seconds. So, C B 2 should obviously trip earlier if it does not trip then C B 1 acts at 1.64 seconds. If you look at at uh, 600 amps uh, C B 2 trips in uh, 3.2.37. and C B 1 trips in 4.9 seconds. So, if you look at this this case you have a margin of about uh, 1.64 minus 0 0.84 of 0.79 seconds and here you have a margin of uh, 4.9 minus 2.37 of 2.6 seconds. So, the margin is uh, uh, greater than uh, 20 to 30 percent tolerances that might occur uh, 
so you may not uh, have the nuisance strip problems of uh, say breaker 1 uh, for some reason operating before breaker 2 for a fault in zone 2. And if you can then calculate what would be the I square T level uh, corresponding to the fault in zone 2 and breaker 2 failing to operate. Okay. So, if C B 2 fails, your I square T is at 1000 amps, it is 1000 into 1.64 is 1.64 into 10 to the power of 6 is less than 2 into 10 to the power of 6. So, the fault does not cause damage in zone 1. So, the uh, damage does not spread to zone 1. So, if you look at the other range of current, you have 600 square into 4.9 seconds equal to 1.78, which is also less than 2 in the 10 power of 6 ampere square second. So, uh, so you are uh, you might due to the failure of circuit breaker 2, you might have some damage in zone 2, but the damage does not now propagate into zone 1. So, the next thing that you would have in this particular situation is we had identified three zones. So, zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. What happens for a fault in zone 3? Ideally, we have not indicated what is the protective device that is used in zone 3. It could be a circuit breaker or it could be a fuse. Uh, so the question is will uh, the breaker C B 2 act as a backup and if it is acting as a backup, what is the fault uh, I square T that is happening in zone 2. Okay. So, if you look at fault in zone 3, your the primary protection the primary protection is the local protection and C B 2 is uh, backup. And if you look at now your trip time for I f max in zone 3, you have 35 divided by 35. And if you look at your trip time, at I f men in zone 3, your current level is now 450 amps and you could then calculate what your I square T level is. So, your I square T at 600 amps that turns out to be 8.54 into 10 to the power of uh, 6 uh, or 10 to the power of 5, which is less than 1 into 10 to the power of 6. Uh, if you look at the 450 amp level, you get uh, 8.9. So, again in case there is a, a failure in the protection in its uh, local zone, then the C B 2 settings will not cause the fault to propagate into zo zone 2. Okay. So, there is backup protection. However, in uh, many situations it may not be possible to apply 
to obtain all the possible conditions. You might have situations where if you look at the example that we have been looking at, the fault current levels are not overlapping. If you have overlapping ranges of fault current levels, you may not be able to achieve all the uh, conditions of uh, your coordination requirement. Also, you might have situations where your upstream source might have uh, uh, impedances that are va varying over a wide range. You might have transformers that are switching in and out. You might have lines that might be tripping. So, the impedances might be varying over a wide range and over that entire range it might not be possible to achieve uh, the full coordination. So, you, so you might uh, not be able to meet all these requirements, but your objective is to try, try and meet as many as possible. Okay. So, the other thing that uh, we did in this particular example is look at uh, individual values of fall current levels uh, and look at looked at the maximum, minimum and looked at what the timing uh, trip timings are of the breakers. Uh, another way of looking at uh, coordination is to plot your uh, trip time versus current and see where the curve lies and we will uh, we'll look at this say in the case of a, a fuse. And by looking at the position of the curve, you can get a broader feel for is the coordination working or not? Is it possible for one device to trip uh, before the other device? So, many times uh, uh, softwares that do the co co coordination calculations can actually give plots of uh, uh, time versus current coordination curves, which also give you a visual feel of whether the coordination is happening over a range of uh, conditions. Okay. So, in the second situation, we will look at a uh, 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 case where you are coordinating say between uh, uh, two fuses, a upstream and a downstream fuse. So, in case of a circuit breaker, you had you have uh, the pickup current and the, the, uh, the actual current flowing through the protective device. In case of the fuse, you have looking at uh, the uh, um, ratio between your actual current flowing through the fuse and the current required to melt the fuse. Okay. So, uh, similar to what we defined for, uh, for the circuit breaker, you could actually now define a ratio m, uh, melt ratio as your actual fuse current. divided by so as long as the current is below this melt current the fuse is not going to get damaged once you go above that particular melt current level uh, you have uh, a possibility of the fuse melting and the time required to melt would now depend on your uh, value of the current that is flowing through the fuse. Okay. So, uh, we can in this particular case again we can define say uh, zone 1 and zone 2 and we can define what it means by coordination uh, between fuse 1 and fuse 2. Uh, for example, if you have a fault in zone 1, fuse 1 is the device which needs to operate. By coordination, if you have a fault in zone 2, you want fuse 2 to melt without damaging fuse 1. Okay. So, that is essentially the requirement for a coordination between a upstream and a downstream fuse. So, you can now define uh, in case of a upstream and downstream fuse, if you have a fault say in zone 2, then the fuse that is actually protecting is actually F 2. So, F 2 may be called the protecting fuse. and F 1 is actually the protected fuse, F 1 is actually protected by F 2. And you want your protecting fuse to be below in terms of your uh, fault uh, melt time versus current characteristics, you want it to be uh, the curve to lie below uh, 
that of the protect uh, protected fuse okay so the protected fuse would typically have a larger i square t And what you want to ensure is if you take a typical component you would have tolerance, you would have uh, the minimum melt time and the maximum melt time. So, in this particular case uh, your solid lines may correspond to the minimum melt uh, time required for the fuse to melt and your dotted lines might correspond to the maximum uh, melt time. So, you, what you want to ensure is that the uh, your uh, some k times your your t min of your protected fuse in this case f1 is greater than your t max of your protecting fuse F2 and uh, k is a number which is less than uh, 1. So, for fault current ranges in zone 2, you want a condition like this to be satisfied. So, you could take uh, num uh, k as say 70 percent or 75 percent. So, you want to ensure that with some margin you have uh, sufficient distance between this particular point. Uh, T max of uh, F2 and T min of F1. Okay. So, so I think uh, that gives you a picture about what it takes to actually uh, do coordination between uh, 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 upstream and a downstream fuse. And here you can see that you ca the the curve gives you a picture. So this shows at one particular point the range of current that might be experienced by F1 might be a range somewhere like this. The range of current experienced by F2 might be a smaller range. So, you want to make sure that within its range this coordination is being achieved. Okay. So, next we will look at the case where you are uh, trying to achieve coordination uh, between say a recloser and a circuit breaker. Say you have upstream recloser and then you have a, a circuit breaker downstream. So, your recloser might be sitting at the substation and your circuit breaker may be somewhere further down the downstream and uh, by a recloser it need not just be the timing of uh, uh, trying to stay close for some time then opening staying uh, reclosing again etcetera. The logic un underlying the recloser might also have a circuit breaker characteristic. Okay. So, in addition to the recloser characteristic, there might be an underlying circuit breaker characteristic. So, the circuit breaker uh, in, uh, in this particular R can be coordinated with CB2 like what we have discussed previously. So, now we will focus on what the characteristic of the timing in terms of the uh, cycling between the open and close of the recloser should be so that you can coordinate between R and C B 2. Okay. So, the first question is what you mean by coordination in this particular case. If you have a fault in zone 1, so obviously the device that need to protect that is your recloser. So, R has to clear faults in zone 1. Now, if you have a fault in zone 2, the question is is that fault temporary or permanent? If you have a temporary fault in zone 2, then it should it can be cleared by the recloser by its recloser action. Okay. But if you have a permanent fault in zone 2, you want C B 2 to open before your recloser locks open. Okay. So, uh, so, if you have a fault in zone 2, C B 2 would open then during the reclose the next reclose cycle, your zone 1 would go back to normal operation and it would continue with this particular breaker being open and the section in zone 1 having its no normal power feed. Okay. 
So, if you look at then what the logic in the recloser is, if the current in the recloser goes above some particular threshold value, it will open. Okay. So, once it opens the current goes down to 0, it will wait for some duration and then it will close again. Okay. So, after it recloses, it will see whether it is uh, current is still going above the threshold and then it will go through such cycles of uh, say closing uh, for say n cycles. After n cycles if the current is still above the threshold then it stays locked open. Okay. So, in terms of logic it is a fairly simple and straightforward logic in terms of what the recloser would do. Okay. So, if you If you look at the recloser logic, if I RMS through the recloser is greater than I some threshold, so one it opens, it waits for some time. then it recloses, then if I RMS So, depending on what the n is, you can have uh, 2 cycles, 3 cycles, uh, number of cycles of the recloser. Uh, if So, with this logic we will make use of the same data for say zone 1 uh, uh, and zone 2 and look at an example of what can be done when you have a upstream recloser and a downstream circuit breaker. Okay. So, so we will look at the example where say the recloser if you say you have a fault happening at some particular point of time for a short duration the current level goes high, uh, the duration T naught we have taken as 0.1 seconds, then it opens for a duration of 5 seconds, then it recloses, it recloses now uh, for uh, 0 0.7 seconds. If the current level stays high again for in this duration it opens again for 5 seconds. So, after 5 seconds it try reclosing a second time and there it stays closed for 3 seconds. If the current is continuing to be above your threshold level even at the end of this particular 3 seconds then it will lock open. Okay. If the current say came down at some point of time uh, before this 3 seconds ended then essentially the recloser would uh, go back to normal operation because it would not lock open it would go back to the normal conditions. Okay. So, that is essentially the logic. So, we will take these as the numbers in our example for the recloser uh, 
for circuit breaker 2 we will use as use the same parameters as we had in our uh, CB CB uh, circuit breaker to circuit breaker coordination example and we look at uh, the situation when you have faults in zone 2. So, what is shown over here is an example of fault in zone 1, it tried a permanent fault in zone 1, it tried two reclose cycles and it just locked open at the end of it. Okay. So, the current came down to 0 and stayed 0 at the end of such a situation. So, if you look at uh, uh, zone 2 fault, uh, what your objective is make use of reclosing uh, to clear temporary faults and recloser So, we will look at what happens in this particular situation when you have fault current in, bit, uh, in the maximum and minimum current in that particular range uh, in this particular example. Okay. So, at 1000 amps which is the maximum fault current level in zone 2 you have your trip time of your circuit breaker is 0 0.85 seconds and if you look at now your T naught duration of uh, 0 0.1 seconds then this corresponds to uh, the breaker advancing by 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.85 which corresponds to 11.8 percent of your uh, trip time for the circuit breaker. So, it is about 11.8 uh, uh, percent to trip at that particular condition and then you have actually the first half duration T of 1 of 5 seconds and the 5 seconds in terms of the overall reset time for the circuit breaker which is 30 seconds. It means that uh, it is resetting by 16.67 percent of uh, T reset. So, obviously, it is not going below 0, it, so it now resets back to 0. So, at the end of your, uh, your cycle over here, at this particular point, your uh, circuit breaker 2 is actually now fully reset. By the fault current level, it went up to 11.8 percent, it came down to 0, uh, it is fully reset at this particular point of your uh, operation of the recloser. Now, if you look at uh, your next action, so so if you look at your next action, if you look at your your closed duration one TC one of point. 7 seconds. So, that corresponds to 0 0.7 by 0 0.85 of your circuit breaker. So, it is actually about 82.8 percent of your trip time. So, in this particular case it is ad advanced to 82.8 percent. 
then if you look at your second open duration T of 2 of 5 seconds. It is now 16.67 percent. So, if you look at your circuit breaker, So, at the end of your second uh, of uh, your second T of uh, duration. So, at this particular point over here at this particular point over here you are now about 66 uh, uh, about 66 percent of your trip level in your circuit breaker. Now, if you look at your closed duration 3 of 3 seconds, 3 seconds divided by 0 0.85 is 355 percent. So, obviously, it has tripped before the 3 seconds has ended. Uh, so, your actual trip time for your circuit breaker that corresponds to 100 so it didn't required 3 seconds it in tripped in 0 0.3 seconds in the second uh, reclose cycle okay so at this particular uh, condition essentially zone 1 goes back to normal operation because the current level returned back to the condition of uh, norm, uh, the nominal loading of that particular zone and uh, what the recloser did was it made two attempts made two attempts to clear a temporary fault in zone 2 and uh, because it was uh, permanent it uh, uh, it tripped the breaker before the recloser locked open and if you look at uh, the margin you had you have 3 seconds minus 0 0.29 seconds you have 2.7 seconds of margin at uh, 1000 amps uh, current level okay so next you could actually look at what happens at the lower current level because you have to look at across the whole range so if you look at the current level of 600 amps your trip time is of the breaker so you know your trip time at now your reduced current level at the minimum current level so, if you look at now your T naught in this case of 0.1 second this corresponds to 4.2 percent of T T R. If you look at uh, uh, T of 1 
of 5 seconds it is 16.7 percent of T reset. So, again the breaker is fully reset uh, at this particular point. If you look at now your reclose duration uh, T C 1 of 0.7 second that corresponds to Uh, about 29 uh, percent of your trip time and if you look at your T of 2 of 5 seconds which is 16 percent uh, your uh, circuit breaker uh, 2 at this particular point So, if you look at uh, the point uh, over here at the, the reduced fault current level, it is about 12.8 percent into tripping. So, that is the situation of the circuit breaker at that particular point okay, of time. So, if you look at then uh, uh, the next uh, duration of uh, reclosing, which is for 3 seconds. So, if you look at T C 3 equal to 3 seconds. So, this corresponds to 3 divided by 2.37 or 126 percent of trip time. So, again the circuit breaker is going to trip before it uh, when it reaches 100 percent. So, it is going to trip definitely before uh, the 3 second uh, duration that you have. So, your uh, actual tripping So, if you look at uh, you had 12.8 uh, percent from your first reclose cycle. So, what remains in your second reclose cycle is actually 87.2 which is uh, 100 percent. So, if you look at the corresponding time uh, you get of 2.1 seconds would be that time required for your breaker to trip. Okay. So, the margin that you have in this particular case is 3 seconds minus 2.1 or about 0.9 seconds of margin at the uh, lower current level. So, you can see that the margin is reducing as the current level becomes lower and lower. So, the, so at very low current levels your breaker needs more and more time to trip. So, at some level there is a possibility that you might actually cause a lockout before your uh, breaker operates. So, one thing you could do is uh, you could actually decide on what your threshold level for your recloser needs, needs to be. So, if you look at your fault current in, uh, uh, in your zone 2 or further downstream if you have a fault in zone 3 etcetera your current level can come down below uh, 600 amps. So, there is a possibility that at some reduced current level your recloser might actually lock open before the downstream device acts. So, one thing you could do is you could verify now through calculations at I f of uh, 524 amps your C B 2 trip will coincide with R lockout. So, if your current level is above uh, say 524 amps, then 
your C B 2 would trip before uh, the, the, the recloser operates locks out. So, if you set your threshold current level for your recloser to be higher than 524 amps, then the recloser would not operate at the reduced current level and ensuring that you do not have nuisance trips up, upstream because of reduced fall current levels that are occurring downstream. Okay. Though in typical protection coordination practice, uh, you typically design the upstream protection before you decide on what you do for the downstream. In some of these situations, you will have to look at the entire situation to decide on what uh, should be the setting so that you do not have nuisance strips. Okay. So, another situation that you can uh, potentially have is uh, then looking at a situation where say you have a recloser which is sitting downstream and a, a fuse or a circuit breaker which is upstream. So, we will lo look at an example where you have an upstream fuse and a downstream recloser. Uh, it could be uh, say a backup protection fuse operating with a downstream recloser uh, and then the question is how do you then determine the coordination settings? What does it mean for uh, coordination to be done in this particular case? So, obviously, in this case again if you have a fault in zone 1, it has to be cleared by fuse F 1. Okay. If you have a temporary fault in zone uh, 2, your recloser should clear the temporary fault by its recloser action. If you have a permanent fault in zone 2, then your fuse F 1 should not get damaged which means that your recloser should lock open before fuse F 1 gets damaged. In the previous example, your recloser should not get locked open before your circuit downstream circuit breaker operates. In this case, you want your recloser to lock open before your upstream fuse gets melted. Okay. So, we will look at this particular example in uh, greater detail uh, in the next class and uh, uh, the main idea behind looking at uh, these, uh, these situations in a distribute, uh, distribution system is that now, if you have if you are doing coordination of your protective devices in some particular manner, uh, now if you add say a DG to one of these buzzers, would what would be the new situation? What would be the new fault current level? What would be the changes that you would need in the system when you in introduce the newer uh, distributed generation device? And this is something that we will uh, continue with in the discussion in the next class. We will look at the example of the upstream fuse and a downstream recloser. Okay. Thank you.